Rather dark corner. And now we are in the light. <laughs> as much as Beautiful I can human. arrange, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful humans, welcome to uh, our episode here of Embodied Business today with Anastasia Garali. Beautiful friend. It's great to have you here. And always wonderful who, to be with you. Who haven't come across Anastasia, she's a um, like a wealth evangelist and, and making money from a spiritual perspective. Um, also a hypnotherapist trained with Marissa Peer. And so we'll, we'll share conversations in yeah, the next two days as well. So today we're really looking at success and kind of like old paradigm versus the soul aligned business. And are we creating from a place of alignment? Are we creating from a place of ego? Is it really heart centered what we do? Or is it kind of like hustle and grind type mentality? Mm. And with that, if any of you have any questions that are joining us throughout this conversation, there's a question function here at the bottom. And then you can also just put them in the chat and we will get to making it relevant to also the things that you bring in. So Anastasia, before we start, um, it's, it's really exciting. I, I love how you're like making money and being spiritually wealthy as fuck. And that is, that is just something so yeah, beautiful and witnessing also your evolution from being a serial entrepreneur to mm -hmm. uh, yeah, ultimately first doing something that was, it, it, it seemed aligned at the time, but then while doing it, you realize that, oh, there are steeper and deeper layers of purpose of who you are and what mm -hmm. you're meant to do. And if you maybe want to start there and then we're getting into a, how do you create it from your blueprint and what is your blueprint? Yes, thank you so much, Toby. I mean, you and I have known each other uh, for a few years now. So you've really been quite close in witnessing the evolution of Anastasia. Um, so thank you so much for being being a witness, because I think um, I think, you know, when I when I say it, it's just words. But when when someone sees it uh, and sees the evolution, like you can't make sorry can i can i swear on this podcast uh, just be 100 percent yourself okay <laughs> you can't make this shit up you know like how quickly things happen and how quickly things shift when you step into that downstream flow of, of abundance um i mean i i can say the words and people can hear it and it, it sounds nice in theory but when you witness someone and it's even surreal for me to like look back at 2019 you know where we met in Istanbul like the Anastasia that was then and the Anastasia that is now is is a, a, a totally evolved and, and upgraded graded and updated one um so yeah I'm super excited about today's discussion success and the old paradigm versus soul aligned creation uh and of course discussing our unique blueprints because there is no one size fits all to what we are here to experience what we are here to contribute right and what we are here to um to have fun with and play with and the wonderful news and this really is good news and i want everybody to properly receive it is that um money is a byproduct of a life well lived it's not a goal it's not actually a desire. It's just a resource that is available to support your um, your growth in the three areas that matter, body, mind, and soul. Without the resources, it's very difficult to experience aligned growth as a human being, as a soul, as a spirit. Wow. Just money as byproduct. It's just that's... a byproduct. Like It literally is nothing more than a resource, than a byproduct of you living in alignment with your, your unique limitless potential. And it's interesting because uh, when, when you say when we met in Istanbul, yeah, I, I met you as very much being in the like, hypnotherapy space. And then, yeah, the last time we spoke, you were talking about your new program and having like a hundred K launch. And it's just like, wow, you know, I, it, it's really, really exciting to see how you lift into, into this yourself. And, really sharing it from a place of like, yeah, I've experienced it. And that's why I embody literally like the, the, the things that, that I'm saying. And so what I love to unpack more is the, the blueprint. 
Like, mm -hmm. what, what is it that you see as the blueprint? And how can people discover their own blueprint to, yeah, living a life well, and then being worthy to access these resources to create mm -hmm. the things that they're meant to create? Mm, mm, mm. Thank you so much. Um, so let me first start by differentiating uh, ego from, from soul. Um, ego is your inner child. Ego is your, um, your conditioning, your trauma. It, it's your upbringing. Ego is your experiences, right? Ego is not, ego is not the enemy. Ego needs love ego needs compassion ego needs acknowledgement ego needs integration so we never delete the ego we we never reject the ego because that will only cause more disconnect from da, 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 enter soul right so your soul is your your higher self uh i i i do take this from um the language that i use may not resonate but please try to please try to um, replace the words that I use that maybe don't resonate with, with something that does resonate for you. So your soul for me is your higher self. Your higher self is your direct line to the divine, to the creator, to God, to universe, right? So that is what, what brought you into this physical form to experience the physical world, right? Um, your body is is the vehicle. Your body is just the, the temple that your soul gets to use to to drive on this journey uh, in the 3D. Um, your soul has access to other dimensions as well, which we're not going to go into because they're not really relevant when we're talking about the 3D world, when we're talking about what we're here to physically manifest, to physically experience, right? Um, your ego has certain desires. Your ego has certain needs, right? Our basic needs that need to be met, such as food, shelter, uh, love, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, of course, your soul has these other crazy ideas, those moments of inspiration, like, "Ooh, wouldn't it be cool to do that? Wouldn't it be nice to live like that? Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be fun to like earn that kind of money? Wouldn't it be?" Wouldn't it be nice to have a relationship like that or have that type of experience? Um, that's your soul, right? The things that are like out there that are almost imaginative, right? And when we are children, we very much live tuned in, tapped in, turned on to our soul, which is why we have this like over overactive imagination, this beautiful imagination, and we see things and we experience things um, at a much more playful at a much more surrendered level. Of course, as we grow, our conditioning, our experiences, our trauma, our unprocessed trauma, um, slowly starts to disconnect us from that wouldn't it be nice uh, reality that you know we we want to make up for ourselves. Now the wonderful thing is that none of this is real. Like this is all, uh, this is all just a filter and you can literally update and upgrade that filter whenever, whenever you feel ready to do so. The more, however, engaged and plugged in you are to a current reality, a current income state, a current, um, a current design for what business and, and career should look like and what relationships should look like, the more plugged in you are to, um, to a predetermined filter, to a predetermined societal norm, right? Like this is what success looks like. Success looks like X amount of money in the bank. Success looks like this type of lifestyle. Success looks like this type of relationship, right? And if I don't have these boxes ticked, then that must equal to not being successful which is why we have this quite masculine drive. And that's something that we're going to explore in the next few days. We have quite a masculine drive to want to achieve certain things, which our peers um, have, have widely accepted and validated as a, uh, um, a milestone for success, right? Your soul, however, is capable of so much more. And your soul has its own aligned desires, which are God-given, 
which are so much greater than what you can currently comprehend or imagine because your imagination as an adult can only stretch as far as you've seen, as far as you've experienced and as far as you've been told what's real and what's feasible. When you live tuned in, tapped in, turned on to your soul and when you become fluent in your soul's language, then there are no limits because you truly, truly are limitless. And even using the term reaching your full potential, I don't use that type of language because even that um, kind of that, that kind of insinuates that there's there's a limit to being full. And the truth is that it's your limitless potential that you get to tap into, right? And just to put it into perspective, if we were to talk about money, because money is something that's quite tangible and that sort of is my zone of genius, um, Whatever you have earned in a, a year, in a 12 month period, you carry or you have carried the vibrational frequency of that income bracket. The only thing that limits you is that you currently have a story, a narrative, a, a, a paradigm that that is what you can earn over 12 months. If you were to remove that time constraint, you can collapse time. You can you can literally earn that much in six months, in three months, in four weeks, in one week, because you've already achieved that on a on a vibrational frequency. So you already know what it means to have like a hundred k income or a fifty k income or a you know a, a, um, more than that, a three hundred k income. Whatever you can achieve in twelve months, you can achieve in. Um, in one month, in one week, in one day, if you increase your impact, right? Because the level of your impact will influence your, in, your income. Your income is just a wonderful byproduct of you increasing your impact. I think that was really beautiful. There's this whole piece around, yeah, what you can do or what you have done in a year, remove the time bracket and basically double, quadruple. <laughs> what, 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 whatever because then, then your year you suddenly just gets bigger and bigger right your potential becomes limitless because you've removed the time constraints and that is really fascinating with this sort of like 3d 5d um reality when suddenly you remove the time constraint and yes i have the capacity to whatever conduct 100k or 50k and then suddenly it's like oh it doesn't need to be over 12 months it can be in half a year and suddenly you already are 100 key person. This is really awesome, honestly. I love that. Um, and the, I mean, the, the other pieces say the income and impact um, correlation. And I think that's what I personally experience a lot at the moment. It's like sort of shedding layers of purpose where I felt like, yeah, this was my purpose and I felt really connected to the entrepreneurial path. Mm. And now I'm realizing, am I really delivering most value to society in this entrepreneurial thing? Or am I actually delivering more value when I integrate my university and my tech experience with the entrepreneurial thing, carry that sort of entrepreneurial thinking, but become part of an organization again that potentially you know, brings students into uh, workplaces or support a tech company, build out a community, whatever it may be. But it's, it's really that, um, yeah, increasing the impact and potentially it's, it's, it's quite sort of like elitist working by myself, like on my own sort of reality versus can I bring my gift to a, a bigger context mm -hmm. where we're co-creating a reality? And maybe you can speak in, into this. So how, how do we increase the impact that we bring by being clear? Like, what is my unique zone of genius? And mm. in your case, you the money piece as well. Thank yeah. you. What a great question. Thank you so much. And I, and I, I love the way that you are questioning, you know, like mm. what, sh what should my purpose be? What is my contribution? Do I focus on the one thing that, that is, is near and dear to my heart? And that is this journey of being an entrepreneur and, and trying to create something that is new, or do I bring in my zone of genius and, and contribute to something else that maybe is not mine, but I can create a bigger impact there, right? What a great question. Um, and this is something that ego will play tricks with you. So you said, you know, do I, do I 
do I ground into my my desire, my vision to grow my business or, or my thing and to create some sort of movement or change? Oh, look at the light, light. <laughs> Angels are always with us. Um, do I ground into my thing or do I release the need to, to be do my thing by myself and allow myself, give myself permission to, to contribute and to give to something that is existing. And this is actually the difference between creation and generation, right? When I'm, when I'm being a creator that requires a lot more uh, time, energy, money, and love, it requires a lot more resources to create something from nothing, than it does to, to generate something from existing resources. And when I become a generator and I allow myself to be a generator, I can alchemize all the existing resources, right? And therefore increase my impact. And no man is an island. That is very, very important for us to remember that we're not here to do things alone. So even if you have a vision to help people, but right, you can't do that by yourself, you still need people around you supporting you supporting the vision and this is really um this is really what what pendulums are pendulums require thoughts pendulums require energy pendulum requires people to be plugged into an idea to be invested in something either for it or against it because whether they're against it or for it they're still contributing to the swing of the pendulum if you're one man trying to create one new pendulum by yourself and you're swinging it and swinging it and swinging it unless more people join you, um, you're going to run out of energy, right? You're, you're going to eventually stop swinging it and, and uh, it'll, it'll stop swinging by itself, right? So it's, you can definitely increase your impact in an existing space and create and be a bigger contributor by staying in your zo zone of genius and allowing other people to be in their zone of genius rather than dropping into your zone of competence and trying to do everything yourself everywhere. That is really exciting. And, and, I, and I love this piece between sort of like creator and generator. Because I had a conversation with one of my co-creators this morning. And yeah, co-creator, right there it is. There it is. And I was like, man, it is. I mean, I love what I'm doing. And it feels like it, as you just said, it takes a lot of energy because it's like continuously sort of quantum physics. You're the one pushing. The You're the one the pushing the pendulum constantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then so I feel on, on the weekend I was challenged on like, dude, are you are you living into your like fullest potential? Like, are you contributing to the level that, that you could? Mm. And, you know, mm. on Sunday, I, um, so I've been practicing Buddhism for like a year and a half. And so on Sunday, I, I joined the, the organization um, formally in a way. And I feel that really opened the gates for me. I was like, man, am I, am I actually a useful part of society? Or am I kind of like an anarchist that's like, man, fuck society, fuck the structures, like make it burn down and build like a new reality. Mm. And, and that is very much a sort of like generator kind of like ego kind of like hurt in our child where it's like, man, I don't want to be in a space where I could be challenged. But it's actually being open to like yeah i love working with people and especially like on tech products and so there's this new thing that's come through where it's like wow yeah and that i think leads to this this whole blueprint question because um from human design for example when you say generator you know i'm in the human design space like a manifesting generator mm. and how you contextualize that right now with like you know working with existing resources mm. my dad was always and this is a thing that stuck with me he always said like let's make gold from shit you know, and, and it's, it's, it's not like working from nothing, but it's ultimately, you know, not alchemizing trauma or alchemizing darkness into light or, mm. but it's mm. something that's already there. And mm. I, I'd love for you to go deeper into this whole idea. How do we figure out like what our blueprint is? Like what, what is your approach and methodology towards yes. this? Thank you. So I, I will, um, I will challenge, I will challenge that quote a little bit. You can't polish a turd. It's still a turd. <laughs> so no, no, when to cut your losses, right? Uh, and even alchemists, their their goal was to turn lead into gold, which you know they figured out that they can't because it's a totally different material. But when 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 we're, when we're talking about like life alchemy, it really is about like 
um, following a path until I see that that I'm being redirected, right? So obviously trying to turn lead into gold until I discover that there's a whole other element out there, right? That is gold. So knowing when to follow the guidance, knowing when to step into something else, just, just as you like, knew or you, you had a calling like, oh, there's this opportunity where I can contribute here. Do I stay here continuing trying to polish this third or do I follow the guidance where I can step into my zone of genius and contribute to something that already exists, right? And this is the difference between the, um, the anarchist and the, the revolutionist, right? The, the revolutionist wants to be part of the solution. The anarchist just wants to like rebel against the, the system. So, I can create much more impact from the inside and much more influence from the inside than I can from the outside. And the same goes for, for me within me. Within me, if I can alchemize within me everything that is, um, that is keeping me stuck from, uh, from following my true potential, that is keeping me stuck from following my, my guidance, my intuitive guidance, because we are all sidekick. We all have that beautiful, uh, that, that, that calling within us. And human design is a very big part of what I do as well, because it was something that literally gave me permission. It suddenly helped me make sense of everything that I'd struggled with my whole life. You know, I'm a manifester. So knowing that now that I know that as a manifester, manifestors, you know, manifesting children essentially raise themselves. They, they don't need much parenting because they know what they want and they, they know what they like. They don't need to be told. And that was actually why I always had a problem with authority, which is why um, I'm not a good employee because I'm a good boss. <laughs> so knowing that, knowing that my zone of genius is leadership, but leadership doesn't have to look the way that it looked before, right? I'm not a tyrant. Uh, I'm a leader as in I'm a trailblazer. I'm here to to, to blaze a trail and then to show other people like, hey, there's this way that you can go. Manifesting generators have both that quality and of course the quality of the generator where you can lead and you can be a team player. Generators are team players. Um, and then there are of course our projectors who are people that can see things. They're really, really good at making connections and really good at seeing opportunities and seeing shortcuts. And then our reflectors, our reflectors only make up 1% of the population, they're here to reflect back to us the state of, of the team, the state of the collective, the state of humanity. So everyone has a role to play and no role is superior or inferior. We are all essential and this is where the law of oneness is, is fundamental to understanding this. When I allow myself to be one with everything that is around me and everyone. And I allow myself to also, also be a sovereign being within that, right? So, so to also, also be one with my truth. Oh, that is where the magic happens. That is where I, I feel surrendered because there is always support. There is always resources around me. Plus my soul guides me to what I'm here to experience, to what I'm here to create. And then of course, non-attachment to the timeline that that has to happen on, right? Like, oh shit, I'm turning 50 and I haven't done this. So I'm turning 40 and I haven't achieved that. And all these weird rules that, um, that are so old paradigm that we should have achieved certain things by a certain time and a certain age, you know, the time is running out. Says who, you know, the interesting thing is that we think we're going to live forever and we keep postponing things until later. I keep postponing wanting to start my business until my children, you know, have left the, the home or I keep postponing my desire to want to move until I, until I retire, you know, I want to go live somewhere in the sun. Oh, I'll wait until I'm a pensioner or I keep postponing my joy. I keep postponing my pleasure. I keep postponing my big juicy desires for later, 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 and tomorrow never comes. And the reality of it is that you think you're going to live forever until you realize that this is your only life. And then that is the day that your second life begins. When you decide that this is my only life, it's now or never, this is my new standard, this is my new non-negotiable, I'm doing everything from now, now. <laughs> right? I'm not waiting. I'm not projecting things into the future. I'm allowing myself to manifest it 
in this time zone, in this moment, and and I I get to. I get to experience it on a real physical level, right? The the finance that I want, the relationship that I want, the career that I want, the connection that I'm looking for, the contribution which I want to make. I get to do that now. It doesn't need to be a future goal. Hmm. I think there's something, there's like three beautiful points. One of the things is timeline. That's something that I recognize in myself a lot. It's like, always kind of living in the future and I'm moving towards it, but it's, it's this interesting piece where the present is kind of like dissatisfying. And then when I get to the future, which seems like really exciting, I'm already in the next future and that future, then it's my present. It's again, dissatisfying. And so, I mean, this is like one thing, you know, how, how do you move the future to now? Mm. Question one. Then probably with that is sort of the energy of desire. Like how do we basically being turned on as a state of being kind mm. of probably also mm. bring in kind of like sexual energy and being like, like this yeah. is the thing that I'm creating. I'm going to ask and you then, to repeat that question later. Yes. <laughs> and then the, the last piece was around creating impact from within because it came up in the context of creating impact within an organization rather than necessarily being on your own entrepreneurial quest. But then there's this other piece that you highlighted is being rooted kind of like in your own body mm -hmm. rather than basically having your energy codependently invested in everybody else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so maybe starting from being rooted within and then moving into these juicy desires and then the future piece, making it now. Good. So let's start with, um, I'm going to start with your first question. Like how do we collapse time? How do we bring things into this timeline? Uh, it's really, really easy. The, the, the power of now, right? <laughs> it's, it's about being present. And like you said, like, it's always a moving target, like happiness keeps moving. Right. And, and as soon as we get close to this goal, this desire, then, oh, we're already looking for the next one and the next one, and the next one. And that's, that's really man's DNA. That's our, um, our, our survival instinct. Like we, we, are we and i would dare dare to say the masculine because the masculine regardless of your gender is is within all of us um the masculine desire to want to hunt right because your survival depends on it so you're never going to eat one meal that's going to satisfy you for your whole life you're going to need the next meal and the next meal and the next meal and that's that's the same with our goals and our desires you're never going to reach one milestone and then say oh that's it like I've, I've had my moment for the rest of my life there's always going to be the next thing and the next thing and that's a really good sign it's a really positive sign that you're continuing to grow and to evolve and as long as you are alive enjoy that and and find find um find pleasure in in the next the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, but also really ground into what you are receiving. So that's where the mas the masculine is, you know, to 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 pursue. The masculine is to go for the next thing. The feminine is to receive. So that means break down your goals, break down your desires. And instead of making this massive mountain that you have to climb up, and only when you get to the summit, then that's when you are successful and that's when you have arrived. Celebrate every single milestone, you know, every hundred meters that you've gone up or every time that you've pitched a tent or every time that you made it through another day, like start to really ground into like every little thing that I get to celebrate on the way to, right? Because life is not a destination that we're here to arrive at. Life is a journey. And if you're not enjoying the journey and you're living for the destination, when you finally get to when you finally get to the destination, it's going to be like, really, that was it? It's not going to feel fulfilling because you've placed all your eggs in that basket and then you finally got it. And it was like, well, that, all, that was hard work or that was, you know, that was a lot of, a lot of effort for just this because you're going to have the next thing, right? So everything is really a stepping stone. Nothing is ever a destination. Every goal, every desire is a stepping stone to the next goal desire. When we can sink into our feminine, we can truly absorb and receive 
every single step and every single milestone and celebrate it. So that's the first question. The second question was repeat. <laughs> it was really around creating the impact from within. So Thank whether you. it's within the organization or mm. within mm. our own body. Wonderful. Um, you cannot share what you do not have, right? So if I'm here to help other people, if I'm here to support other people, if I'm here to uh, to to create success in 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 my business or this business, right? To meet certain um, certain goals. Uh, if I won't allow myself to receive, if I won't allow myself to be supported, if I won't allow myself to, to be financially abundant, if I won't allow myself to be loved, then how can I give? How can I contribute outside of me? Because I'm pouring from an empty cup. So that's why it's very, very important to understand that, yes, while we are one and we're here to be part of the one, we are also individual cells that make up the one. And if one cell is unhealthy, that, that disease can spread to another cell and another cell and another cell, making the whole unhealthy, which is why it's so important for us to recognize that my duty, and actually this is where I'd like to introduce how I use the word purpose. Um, purpose is not what you do. Well, I know that, that man or masculine's purpose is something that is outside of him. Um, regardless of gender, when I say him or her, I'm saying our our need to uh, to contribute, our need to give, right? That's a masculine trait. Um, it's outside of us, but the reality of it is that, or the reality, the, the, the 5D reality of it is that your purpose, Tobias, and my purpose, and everyone's purpose, is to be the greatest, most expansive version of self. And that may trigger some people because that may come across as selfish, but it's not. Because when I am um, healthy, when I am wealthy, when I am happy, when I am secure, then I can create that environment for the people around me. Jobs, I can create stability for my, my friends, my family. I can create um, a lifestyle that I want my children to, to have. I can't give what I don't have. So if I'm struggling, if I'm suffering, if I'm starving, how can I create an impact outside of me? It, 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 it's, it's not possible. So that your purpose is to be the greatest, most expansive version of you. And that means in every area of life. Mm, that's really beautiful. And that's that's been an interesting one for me because in, in my family, there was this, this thing like everybody took care of everybody else but not of themselves. And so it was this like really like weird codependent pattern. Mm. And so mm. I feel throughout my life, it's been this, this thing of navigating a line between like, you know, is, is it selfish? Is it like altruistic? You know, this is the continuous kind of like course correcting. Mm. Mm. And one of my friends shared recently this whole thing around kind of like washing dishes and kind of one's life being like, like the kitchen sink and mm. you use it to wash your own dishes. But then once you have washed all your own dishes, you know, you can use it to like peel some carrots and make some soup. And then that soup is something that you can share with your friends. And it's it's really where, where I'm seeing what you're sharing. There's this mm -hmm. thing of like, yes, invest in yourself until you're so clear that you can be Expand. the one who is exactly. yeah. so that exactly. you create a space for your friends, your kids. For more. Your mm. Yeah, I love that. This is amazing, Anastasia. Absolutely. Um, and then the, the third question from this place was the energy of desire and potentially also leading into the, the space of self-sourcing, kind of like alchemizing sexual energy into mm. money. And so I'm reading in the Gene Keys right now and there's it's, it's a lot of like interesting perspectives of like the your, your sexual center and your throat center having been one at one point. And then, mm. you know, that's like where you speak your truth from mm. the energy that your body already holds so curious mm. to hear how how you're making sense of yeah. these dynamics yeah absolutely i mean and even like anatomically especially within the women the the yoni and the 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 larynx are identical anatomically you know they look the same um and in, in the work that i do the the um the strength vortex which is uh, otherwise known as the root chakra is the is the 
is the vortex where we um, tap into our creativity, where we tap in our ability to birth masculine and feminine, where we tap into our ability to birth ideas, birth projects, birth life from um, and also it's the strength vortex that's the bottom of your vessel right if your whole body um, your pelvic floor is quite literally holding all your organs up and if we have uh, a loose pelvic floor then it, it 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 will create a whole lot of problems in other areas of my my physical body as well so that's my strength vortex it's the bottom of my vessel if there's a crack or a leak or a tear in the bottom of my vessel and i'm losing strength i'm losing creativity i'm also losing my ability to give birth to um, ideas projects life and um also losing pleasure you know and there's no coincidence that the people that are better communicators are people that will experience more pleasure, will experience more, um, more uh, growth, more um, joy and more support <laughs> because they support themselves through communication. People that don't communicate are the people that have a lot more repressed uh, issues and tissues, right? Uh, in their physical body, a lot more health problems, and as a result, as a ripple effect, a lot more problems in their relationships, in their um, in their careers, because they're not strong enough in in the the strength vortex or in the communication vortex. This is uh, your throat chakra. In the work that I do, is your trust vortex. So if I don't have the strength and I don't have the trust, how can I bring forth love? How can I bring forth hope? How can I bring forth beliefs that support, um, that support my lifestyle and support my, my vision, my desires? Mm, it totally resonates for me. And it's a double-edged sword. When I say like, this is the trust vortex, um, so me not being able to communicate to others, it, it's essentially two or me not being able to trust others, it's a double-edged sword because that means that there's a part of me that doesn't trust myself as well. That's interesting. Yeah, because I think that's something that I, I certainly noticed in a few years ago when I first started, I was actually part of like a public speaking club. And that was really interesting because there was this component of actually really moving through some like real inner sort of resistances and, and traumata and then the moment i started like speaking afterwards i felt like super energized and i was like wow you know this is this thing of like having moved i feel into fear and having shared something that's that's genuine mm. and i feel in in the context that we're discussing today with success and you were speaking about you know people that communicate more they support themselves in in better ways I, I I love to shift gears a little bit into like what are your recommendations like what can people do to feel I am I'm okay you know I am mm. able to tap more into my soul and mm. maybe some some approaches as you take to find more the soul alignment and then also finding the inner courage of communicating that into the world Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's a couple of ways that you can approach this. I mean, I, I obviously teach, and this is like a fundamental part of all that I do, um, is reconnecting to your higher self, to your intuition, reconnecting to your internal compass so that we're no longer looking outside of us for direction. Uh, and when I can reconnect, I can become fluent in my higher self language, because obviously the more fluent I am, the more confident I am in following that guidance, in following that direction. If I'm not fluent in a language, then there's a lot of, you know, uh, bad communication or there's a lot of um, a, a distrust in, in what you're understanding, which will lead to this like stop, start energy, stop, start energy. Like, oh, I want to do it, but is it the right thing? Like, I need someone else to, to validate for me or I need some indicator outside of me to, to tell me that yes it's the right thing or no it's not the right thing or this is this is what you should do versus that is what what you should do when you are fluent in your higher self's language there's a real shift in um in no longer seeking trust and i will 
I will talk about this in a second, but really living in faith. So the difference between trust and faith, trust is based on a track record, right? Trust requires you to prove that there is evidence of someone or something's trustworthiness. And the easiest way that I can explain this is when you go to a bank for a loan, you need to show that you are trustworthy, right? So you need to show assets, you need to show your income, you need maybe even to have a guarantor for a loan. You need to prove that the money that they're giving you in trust um, will, be, will be paid back, right? If you don't have that record of trustworthiness, then your loan will be uh, rejected. Simple, right? It, it really is that simple. So when we're looking for trust, but within myself, I don't have a track record where I can trust myself, where I can trust others, where I've let myself down or other people have let me down or I've let other people down, then, um, then it's going to be very hard for me to, to fake trust. You can't fake trust because fake uh, trust requires evidence. Faith, however, faith is does not require evidence. Faith creates evidence. And then faith um, creates a new track record, which then becomes trustworthy. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And it's... It's also this whole like faith and trust. It's it's a it's a big piece in in my life because mm -hmm. I feel for me also trust. Kind of living in trust is sort of like extrapolating the past into the future. Thank you. Yes. While I feel really living from faith is being open to a future that is unknown, disjointed unknown. <laughs> from the current reality. Mm. And, and it's it's this like it's it's not connected yet, but there will be some path that unfolds towards it and mm. i feel that's that's really what for me like breath work is, is a really beautiful pathway to that and breath work and, and chanting where it's like wow um, yeah and the reason for that is because because it it's it calms the nervous system it calms the nervous system because your physical body uh, will will be triggered, right? If you haven't done the work on a subconscious level and you haven't done the work on a, on a physical level, you, sorry, on a subconscious level, your physical body is the barometer for what you have stored within you. And if your nervous system keeps spiking, then you will keep going into your default survival coping mechanism. So you will keep slipping back into... Um, maybe self-sabotage or running away, freeze, fight, flight or fawn, right? Rather than really grounding into, um, into faith in the unknown because your subconscious mind already has a story for what lives in the unknown and in the unknown lives all the worst possible, you know, scenarios which it wants to protect you from, which is why it has a go-to protocol, which is your survival coping mechanism your survival um survival skills uh breath work is fantastic because it does help to calm the nervous system um meditation fantastic okay we're talking about like mindfulness and self-awareness like just witnessing and observing what is it that i'm feeling what is it that i'm thinking what is it that i'm currently vibrating that is keeping me from tapping into what I know on some weird other level uh, that is still intangible um, that I'm capable of, right? So yeah, those are, are fantastic tools that you can definitely implement. For me, um, if you want to expand, you have to be doing the healing work. You cannot expand without healing and you cannot heal without expanding those need to be done in tandem and that's very much my my methodology that the rapid abundance um, activation method is simultaneous healing and expansion so that i can continue to level up because guess what every level will reveal a new devil so the work doesn't get done once on one level and then i just just keep going up and up and up it's like a video game right i have to develop new skills i have to um collect new coins and, and new tasks in order for me to go to the next level and the next level. And I love what you share there with that growth and healing needs to happen simultaneously, which 
I think when I was going through school, there was this idea of like, yeah, you know, you go through school and then maybe university, but then you're finished. Mm. And you'll just... You've arrived. Like, you've arrived exactly, to you've the, arrived. the big world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think what, what you share there, and I think that is what sort of the entrepreneurial journey reveals a lot, is that every time you're building a new thing, you're confronted with like another demon or maybe the same demon that you worked with before, but more powerful. An evolved so, one. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah. Right? And so Look, I, I think you... entrepreneurship is the, the fastest learning curve that you can throw yourself into because you're going to be confronted by not just not just like technical uh, things that you need to overcome, you're going to be confronted with your own demons, you know, which is why it's not a journey that, that anyone and everyone is cut out for. And that's okay. Uh, but the people that have been called or the people that, you know, really, really feel pulled to do something of their own, um, they, they must absolutely assume and expect that they're going to be growing and evolving as, as a human being, not just as a, not just as an entrepreneur or a, you know, as a business owner, as a human being, they're going to need to evolve and grow if they want uh, to be able to, to expand beyond, you know, solopreneurship into, you know, entrepreneurship and then into like business level. Absolutely. I often look at like entrepreneurship as really the fastest route to self-actualization. <laughs> and it, it, it's like, it's really beautiful what you said there, solopreneurship, entrepreneurship, and in business level. Because often kind of like entrepreneurship, I think it's a bit glorified. It's, it's a bit like, yeah, you know, you can go do your own thing. But it's like, okay, cool. Um, yes. And why are you doing it? You know, are you building a container in which other people find stability? You know, it's, it's, mm. it's I often see kind of like entrepreneurship towards like business ownership really as a, it's a bit like a, a father role, you know, kind of the mm. one that, that, that creates that stability for everyone to be able to evolve within. Mm. And mm. Um, on on this, so Rose was asking a question just now, asking like what what modalities you would suggest for healing. And so I'm not sure if Rose is um, more sort of like in the employed or like entrepreneurship space, but she's seeming to experience. So what would you suggest, Anastasia? I'm biased. I'm obviously going to suggest um, rapid abundance activation because that is my modality. Um, that is uh, something that has been tried and tested. And obviously that is something that resonates with the work that I do because it's not just the psychology, it's also the spirituality that comes into, um, into the, the healing work that I do. Uh, I think that there are so many different ways that you can go about this, um, but you cannot, and this I need to stress, you cannot DIY because we cannot see our own blind spots. So I absolutely suggest to anyone and to everyone is to find a mentor, find a guide um, that resonates with you, right? Uh, and, and allow yourself to, to really go deep into whatever it is that you want to experience. Like for some people, it's Reiki. I mean, for me, uh, and, and I don't want to talk badly about any modalities because everything serves a purpose, but it's really like, what is your desired outcome? What do you want to evolve and grow? Go find a teacher, a mentor, a healer, a therapist, um, a coach, whatever that, that resonates with you and then really ground into doing that work. Stop flittering about and find too many different things because then you're not going to know what gave you results. Like I'm, I'm very big on collecting data, right? So I will commit a hundred day period at the very least to trying something and this is where most people don't. They'll do something for a week and, oh, it doesn't work. And then I'll do another thing. And, oh, that doesn't work. It's like yo-yo dieting. We know it doesn't work mm -hmm. because it requires you to, to change your lifestyle if you want to see lifelong results. So I would say definitely like commit a decent period of time. Don't be ADD when it comes to this work. Um, at least 100 days. Uh, so that you can really ground into doing the work and then seeing the results from it. Because if you're jumping around, you're not you're not really going to get deep results. You're going to get surface level results. And it's interesting what you said earlier about the nervous system. So mm -hmm. I'd be curious to hear your perspective on, let's say, talking therapy mod modalities versus mm -hmm. embodied, like you know, body work modalities. Like, what's your take on that? 
Yeah, um, talking therapy definitely has its its role, right? Um, and and inside my containers, uh, talking is is quite a big thing because I that's the easiest way for us to dissolve our visibility block is to show up and to talk. Because when you talk, and this is how talking is different to journaling, you can hear what you are saying, right? Because in your head, when you think thoughts. You're actually only thinking like you're thinking like um, segments of sentences, and then your subconscious mind just assumes the, the rest of the sentence. You're never actually formulating a full thought. When, however, we're communicating and when we're talking, we're forced to have to formulate the thought uh, and, and to create a sentence and to say it and to hear it. And then here, does this make sense? Or have the other person reflect back to us, are you saying this? Right. So the quality of your your answers, the quality of your solutions will always ever be equal to the quality of your questions. And, and, you know, if you're not asking the right questions to yourself, if you're not being asked the right questions, you're never going to have um, high, high value quality answers. And you're just going to keep going round and round in circles, assuming uh, assuming answers to half baked questions. So that definitely serves a purpose, which is another reason why you can't do this type of work on your own. You need to belong to a community. You need to have a mentor. Um, talk is, is a very big part of your evolution. You can't think your way into an evolution. But then, of course, um, uh, of course, for me, I like to work on a subconscious level because it is the easiest, fastest way to get to the root of a problem and to understand its role and its purpose. Like, why am I still holding on to this? What purpose is it serving? So that I can um, heal, release, rewrite, rearrange it at the level that it's currently being stored. This cannot be accessed on a conscious level because your ego is very, very well adept at, at hiding in the dark, at hide and seek. And it will have you, you know, asking questions and going around and around in the corners that it feels safe exploring, not in the corners where it's truly hiding. I really love this piece, how you contextualize talk and therapy. That was really beautiful. And actually connecting back to this previous piece of how our larynx are, or our, our trust center is, mm. is coming up. Mm, exactly, exactly. And this is why, you know, when we're talking about sexual energy, which is something that you brought up earlier, um, every everyone can vouch for this, that it's so different. Your, your, your sexual pleasure is so different when you are using your voice and your breath, right? Using your, your throat in, in releasing that, um, that, that pleasure, that bliss, that orgasm versus when you're silent. And it's different for the other person opposite you that's experiencing you as well because they get to experience all of you, not just half of you. I totally love this. And I think that this is a really beautiful way to close today and, and announce that tomorrow will be yeah, looking at the energetics of receiving and particular in the context of energetics of receiving money, but also love, pleasure. Um, do you want to say a few more words about what what you would like to to share tomorrow, Anastasia? Tomorrow is going to be really fun. Tomorrow I'm going to talk quite a lot about masculine and feminine energy. So we're going to go quite quite deep into like polarity and, and the difference between giving and receiving um, versus uh, versus taking and getting. Uh, so that's going to be fun. But I do just want to summarize for today as well, right? Like success, there is no one size fits all. There is no one lifestyle that fits us all. There is no one income bracket that fits us all. Um, and there is no there is no um, one relationship type that fits us all right which is why it's so important for us to get clear on what our highest values are because your highest values will ultimately determine what you want to create and what you want to experience and then i also just want to um, clarify that when i talk about like our ego driven desires our ego driven goals right my ego wants to become a millionaire my ego wants to 
create this type of business. My ego wants to help so many people. It's not a bad thing. Okay, we don't need to demonize the ego uh, because guess what? You can do that. You absolutely can um, tick those boxes and you can achieve those very masculine, penetrative goals, but you can also leave room for magic, for the things that you didn't even think of yet, that you don't even know yet that you're capable of and allow yourself to be pulled down a path rather than pushing into every single um, door and into every single uh, gate. And you said something beautiful here with the ego in your summary. And what it triggered for me is like the ego is, is the ego the part that wants to be seen. And then what, what, what is the soul in, in contrast to that? Mm -mm -mm. So ego wants to be seen, heard and understood. Ego wants to be acknowledged. Ego wants to be validated. And ego is your inner child. For me, it's the same thing, right? Because you're, you're, when, when you were a little child, you wanted to be acknowledged. You wanted to be uh, seen and heard quite literally because your survival depended on it right? If your parents didn't see you, if your parents didn't hear you, if your parents didn't feed you, if your parents didn't, um, didn't uh, take care of you, you would die, you would expire, which is why ego has this continual need throughout life to be seen and heard. Ego wants to fit in. And in contrast, ego also wants to be unique and ego wants to be special and ego wants to be different, which is where ego creates this inner conflict within ourselves, right? I want to fit in, but I also want to be special. So special means what exactly? Superior, different, more than, right? Uh, which insinuates that there is, um, there is a level of hierarchy. And if I am more than, then that means that other people are less than, or if I'm less than, that means other people are more than. Uh, soul understands oneness. Soul understands connection. Soul understands life force energy. You know, that, that I'm, I am a cell that's part of a whole and I get, to, I get to play individually and I get to play collectively and I get, to, um, I get to have and do and be anything and everything that I want, right? Because I'm interchangeable, because I am pure potential energy. And that is a really, really exciting, um, exciting place to be plugged into and to be drawing energy from than from ego, which needs witnesses, which needs validation, which needs attention, uh, because I can create that for myself. And actually, the more that I create it for myself, ironically, the more other people validate it as a reflection of my internal state. Wow, that's so fun, <laughs> Anastasia. Um, for, for all of you who've been listening, so tomorrow morning we'll continue the conversation with the energetics of receiving. It will be at 11 a.m. GMT, so three hours earlier than today. And sister, until then, so much love. All your links are in the descriptions of any of you who want to connect with, with Anastasia's work, become spiritually wealthy as fuck. Um, yes, and definitely claim your there. claim your spot to my um, spiritual and wealthy as fuck masterclass. Uh, I drop quite a few golden nuggets in there as well. Thank you so much, Toby. I love I love conversing with you. I love sharing with you, and I love co-creating with you. It's super nourishing. Lots of love. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye. <laughs>